We're going to talk about related rates today, and that's usually one of the harder concepts of uh, calculus just because of all the variables and equations you usually end up dealing with. So just to give like a quick overview of what a related rates problem is, given fast how something's changing, we want to use mathematics to discover how fast other things are changing. So again, at related rates means we're comparing the changes of two things. Uh, they can be physical objects or just um, like concepts. Uh, usually everything changes with respect to time and since everything's changing with respect to time we're going to be deriving with respect to time now since uh, the beginning of the year up to this point we've usually been deriving with respect to x and if you remember that when we were doing that with implicit differentiation when we derived y we got dy over dx now when we derive with respect to time every variable is going to have a derivative over dt so, for instance, the derivative of x with respect to time is dx over dt. So, it, let's just go back real quick to something simple like y equals x squared. When we derive that with respect to x, that was just dy by dx is equal to 2x. And that was, that was the answer. The derivative was 2x. That's how fast y was changing with respect to x. And the reason we wanted that was because that's the slope. Uh, changing y over changing x has always been our slope formula. But really, we, we don't write the derivative of x here because it's just 1. Because really, if, if we did derive x, it would be times dx over dx. That would just be a 1. Now, given that same equation, if we wanted to derive it with respect to a different variable, and um, just for the easiness sake here, we'll do time. If we want to derive this with respect to time, well, y has a derivative with respect to time, dy dt, as does x. So when we derive this, we derive the squared part first because you can think of this as x squared so the outside part is a squared part so that just comes into 2x to the first power times the derivative of what's inside of that and now the derivative is no longer dx over dx it's dx over dt and that's really the only big change calculus wise that, that you're going to see with um, related rates what is going to happen that's a little bit harder is we're going to end up with a bunch of equations that usually make things a little bit tricky so one really common one would, would be something along these lines let me type it out here okay there's a ladder that is 25 feet long, leaning against a wall. Great. The bottom of the ladder begins sliding away from the wall at a rate of, it really doesn't matter, we'll say 2 feet per second. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the bottom of the ladder is sorry, 25, uh, I don't know, 9, 9 feet away from the wall. Okay, so that's a very, very standard, typical related rates problem. You know this is a related rates problem because several things here. First off, they're telling us how fast something's set, uh, moving here. So they're giving us a rate, two feet per second. That's a rate they are giving us. They're asking us how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall. Well now, so they gave us one rate, they're asking us for a different rate, and then they're giving us a bunch of other variables. Not really variables, just other numbers. The ladder's 25 feet, and the bottom of the ladder is gonna be nine feet away. So here's how we're gonna handle this. Step one is we're gonna draw a picture. So there's a ladder, here's a wall. There's our ladder, it's leaning against the wall. And it should say in the problem, I just made this up, but it should say that the wall is perpendicular to the ground because we need to know that this is a right angle here. Okay, so step one, draw a picture. Step two, label everything in this picture that's not changing. Again, this is our ladder. So this is the top part of the ladder up here. This is the bottom part of the ladder down here. So this side and this side are changing because this side's being pulled out this way. So you can put an arrow here if you want that's moving. But the ladder is not changing. The ladder is 25 feet. So we'll put that in there, 25 feet. Okay. Now, if there are other things that weren't changing, I'd, I'd put that in there too. Like this 90 degree angle isn't going to be changing, so I added him in. Also, we know that, or step three, I guess, is you're going to put in everything that is changing. Put all the variables that matter that, that we know about up here into this equation. Well, this thing's changing right here. Why? Because this is going down. Okay. And this thing's changing right here. So there's our picture. 
Now, what we're going to do is we create four categories here. I usually put them in columns. You don't have to put them in columns necessarily, but just really in, in your head, you, you want to think about going through these four columns. And the four columns that I go through are what's every, what is everything that we know, what do we want to know, what are we looking for, what equations can we use to link these two concepts, and the last one is what's unknown in those equations. Whoa, I can't spell this morning. Okay, so what we know is really easy. Just go, th go through the problem using our variables that we've defined here and write out everything we know. Well, we know this ladder is 25 feet. I'm not going to put that in here because that's not changing. I also know that, let me see here, the bottom of the ladder is sliding away from the wall at 2 feet per second. Well, that's x changing. That's the rate of change of x with respect to time. That is dx by dt, and that is 2 feet per second. That's how fast x is changing. If they told us the top of the ladder was sliding down, that would be dy dt. And in fact, that's what we want to find. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall? Well, we want dy dt. So that's going to go over here in this column. But let's finish what we know. We also know that the bottom of the ladder is 9 feet away. If the bottom of the ladder is 9 feet away from the wall, well, that means x at that point in time is 9. Okay, and that, that's important because y is not going to be changing at a constant rate. X is changing at a constant rate of 2 feet per second. We know that because that was given to us. But just because X is changing at a constant rate doesn't mean Y is changing at a constant rate. So to find the rate of change of Y at a specific time, they have to give us some information about that specific time. And that was this 9 feet. So those are the two things we know. We also know that we want dy dt. We already said that. We want to know how fast Y is changing. So that's what we're looking for. The equation we want is an equation that's going to link either, well, usually we, we don't link the, the derivatives right away. We link the other variables, x and y. And once we have an equation that links x and y, we can derive that equation to get our derivatives in, in the equation. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make up an equation with x and y using the constant information they were given. So this is pretty easy. It's a Pythagorean theorem here. You know that x squared plus y squared is 25 squared. Sorry. Okay. Now, uh, this doesn't have to be the equation we use necessarily. If they were talking about the area or something, I might use the area of this triangle. If they're talking about an angle down here for some reason, then I might use tangent or sine or something along those lines. But just because we don't care about the angles and we don't care about the area, we care about these two sides and this side's constant, that's going to be Pythagorean theorem. So that's one equation we know. And we also know if we derive this equation, which we're allowed to do, we can derive both sides, that's going to become 2x dx over dt plus 2y dy over dt, and we're running our room here, equals 0. So these are the equations we're working with here. Again, this was the Pythagorean theorem that has to hold for x and y, and this is the, the derivative of that. And now you can see here, up in this equation, we have two variables, x and y. If you have an equation with two variables and you know one, you can always find the other. Down here, however, we have four variables, x, dx, dt, y, dy, dt. Now we know we're looking for dy, dt. So we're not expected to know that yet. But as long as I know these other three variables, x, dx, dt, and y, I can find dy, dt. Well, I know x and dx, dt. They're in my known column. But I do not know what y is. So I'm going to put that over here in my unknown column. Now my job becomes find out what y is so I can plug it into here and solve for dy, dt. Well, solving for a variable usually means we're going to need an equation with that variable. That's the whole reason why we have this whole equation down here with a dy, dt in it. And the equation we, uh, we want to use is probably over here in this equations column. Well, you can see, hopefully you see this, if there's an equation up here with just x and y, we know what x is, we can find out what y is. There's only two variables here, and we know one of them. So our work turns into, I'm going to write it up here in the corner, um, 9 squared plus y squared is 25 squared, which is 625, which means that y squared is 625 minus 81. Okay, which means y is going to be, what's 625 take away 80? Um, 05, 60 more 45, and one more 44. So that's the square root of 544. Okay, and it doesn't matter if that's a nice number or not. We're just going to leave it like that. Now that we know what y is, we know x, dx, dt, and y. Now we can find dy, dt. So let's go to our next page here. We've got 2x dx by dt plus 2y, dy by dt is 0. x was 9, dx dt was 2, 
y was the square root of 544, and then times dy dt, all that is zero. And all we need to do is solve for dy dt. That's our only variable. So two times two is four times nine is 36. I'm gonna move that over. So we get two root 544 dy dt is negative 36. Then I'm gonna divide by two root 544, and it just happens to turn out that the two and the, eight, the 36 cancel, leaving us with negative root 18 over the square root of 544. And you can simplify the square root. I really don't care, to be honest with you. Um, you can handle that. <laughs> I'm getting lazy. But that's our final answer. And you do have to remember to put units on here. So if you go back, x was changing in feet per second. Uh, 25 feet was measured this ladder here. And that's really all we know. So y is going to be measured in feet and it's going to be changing in feet per second as well you don't really have to worry about the units too much as long as they are all the same thing to start with so there we go there's our answer and just to, just to go through our, our steps here one one more time okay draw a picture to label all constants three label all variables Four, create columns for what we know, what we want, any equations we're going to use, and any unknowns. Use math to solve for the unknowns. And then the very last step is use all other variables to solve for what you want. That's it. And step seven, maybe party down and show off your awesome calc skills and my awesome typing skills. There you go. Those are the steps you should be following to do a related race problem.